Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna be taking a look and testing out the Walkie H6 Step Through. So if you guys follow my channel, you know that I've reviewed the Walkie H6 Step Over bike and it was a great bike, amazing power, amazing performance and huge 35 amp hour battery capacity. Well, this one has a lot of the same specs and features. However, there are a few differences. Obviously, the step over height is one. Another difference is right off the bat, you do not get a suspension seat post with this one. On the original one, they gave you a regular and a suspension post. However, I took the suspension post off the original one anyway because I'm about five foot seven and a half and it was too tall for me. Now this bike, just like the other one, does have dual suspension in the rear and also a front hydraulic suspension. So that's really nice to see. And like I said, 21 amp hour battery in the back, 14 amp hour battery inside the frame for a total of 35 amp hour of battery capacity. So that's awesome. That's amazing. Tons of battery capacity on this bike. Now the back battery behind the seat is going to have the seat have to be up a little higher and the minimum seat height on this bike is 34 and three quarters of an inch with a maximum seat height of 41 and a half inches. Now, both the batteries of this bike weigh about 21 pounds combined when I weighed them on my scale, which puts the bike at about 97 pounds with the batteries. And without the batteries, it's about 76 pounds. So it is gonna be a little bit of a heavy bike even without the batteries. So keep that in mind if you're trying to put this on a bike rack. A lot of bike racks are only limited to like 60 some pound range. So it's something you wanna consider if you were considering purchasing one of these bikes. But excellent quality though, just like their original Walkie H6. It comes with Disland hydraulic disc brakes and 180 millimeter rotors. And just like the original H6, these rotors are really thick, almost like a moped or a motorcycle rotor in a way because they're so thick. It has a hydraulic front fork with a preload on the left and a lockout adjuster on the right. Now this bike does fold in half, so you could put it in back of a vehicle easily to transport it. That is if you can lift the 76 or 97 pound bike, depending on if you have the batteries in it or not. However, I did have a problem with folding it when I first got it. The wires inside were just too tight and would not allow it to fold. All right, so the problem I'm having with the bike not being able to fold is that when you open it up, the shift cable in here is really tight and doesn't give you enough slack. The wires seem like there's enough slack there and the brake cable may be enough, but the shift cable is really tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unwrap these wires on the front here. You can see they're really tight and I'm gonna separate that shift cable and see if that gives me enough slack to be able to fold the bike. All right, you can see I got it to fold. I just had to loosen up that shift cable wire and then i also had to take this plate off and loosen up the power wire i just had to pull some more slack out now there's plenty of slack here for the bike to fold like it should and this is where it would be nice if it had detachable handlebars or handlebars that would fold down so that you could get this thing really compact just going to take up a little bit more space being that the handlebars cannot fold now you can always loosen this bolt up here and fold it down if you needed to and then fold it back up and tighten that back up worst case scenario but just something to keep in mind not as easy as most folding handlebars the maximum payload on this bike is 350 pounds with a 110 pound rear rack weight so 350 total on the back shocks they are not adjustable not really sure what weight rating there is on them and this bike is powered with this 35 amp hour battery capacity with a 30 amp controller the same as their original H6, so this should have tons of power as well, but we're definitely gonna test that out on some hills here coming up. That 30 amp controller is powering the 750 watt rear hub motor, which peaks out at 1400 watts. So you got tons of power there. Up here on the handlebars, you have a nice set of faux leather locking grips, double locking on both sides. You have a thumb throttle next to that with a horn button underneath. Control pad here for controlling your pedal assist levels. Over here on the right hand side, you have an eight speed shimano gear shifter which leads down to the shimano altus derailleur and a 12 to 32 tooth cassette in the rear and this bike is using a cassette which is actually a little bit better than a freewheel coming up the chain we have a 48 tooth chain ring in the front and a set of folding aluminum pedals and on the front chain ring you do have a single sided chain guard here now this bike is sitting on a pair of 20 by 4 inch kenda crusade fat tires and a set of spoked rims and this bike does include a set of plastic fenders on both the front and the rear of the bike. The display on this bike is really nice. It shows you everything you need to know. It shows you your voltage, your current, odometer, trip, 
runtime, watt meter, shows you all kinds of information, anything you really need to know. For safety, this bike has a nice light on the front and a tail light on the back, which is actually a brake light that gets brighter when you pull the brake lever. So that's really nice to see for safety. The handlebars on this bike are a lot different than the original. It doesn't have the long stem with the adjustable handlebars up and down. This does have a set of semi BMX style handlebars here, and you do have some adjustability on your stem here, but it's not a quick adjustment. You have to unloosen this bolt and then you could spin it up and down, and then you would have to unloosen these bolts to get the angle of your handlebars this way. That would have been nice to see some kind of quick release mechanism there. So whenever you fold the bike, you could fold the handlebars down. But if you folded this up to putting back your vehicle, if the handlebars were too high, you would actually have to take this bolt all the way out and take the handlebars off of the stem, which is gonna be a little bit more work. But really good build quality. This does come with the same foam mount that the regular H6 came with. And it also comes with a three amp charger for that large rear battery and a two amp charger for the front battery. So it is nice that they give you two chargers to charge this thing up quick because you'd be there all day charging 35 amp hours of capacity up with just one two amp charger. And the batteries can be charged in the bikes or you could take the batteries out of the bikes and charge them inside if it was cold out or if you were storing the bike during the winter good to take your batteries out not leaving them out in the cold so overall guys really nice build quality here just like their original bike but without further ado let's hop on this baby and see what kind of power it has and see if it performs the same as the original h6 sun's going down i don't have much time so let's get into it Sorry guys, I always forget this part. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below because it really helps out. And if you're considering purchasing this bike after watching this video, please use the affiliate link down below in the description where I'll make a small commission at no extra cost to you. And that's what helps me creating these videos and helps support the channel. Now let's get into it. All right, here we go. Walkie H6 step through. Let's see how it does on the hill that I go up in all my tests first. Throttle only, pedal assist five. Let's see what kind of speed we can maintain. And you guys can compare this to their original Walkie H6 by checking out my second hill test video I did, which shows 26 different bikes going up this hill and what speed they went up it at. So nine miles per hour there. Never dropped below nine miles per hour. Pretty good power. So let's go find some other hills to hit and see how fast this bike is. Now this isn't going to be a super long test. I feel like it's going to be pretty much same performance as their other bike. Plenty of speed and pickup. All right, so I'm going to show you pedal assist one here. Now you cannot adjust each individual pedal assist level, but you can have three, five, or nine different levels. Right now I have the bike set at a max speed of 20 miles per hour for a class two bike. And you can see pedal assist one is taking me up to 12 miles per hour or so. Well, there's 13 there. And then it cut, we'll see when it kicks back in. Didn't kick in yet. It's kicking in now, so about seven. We'll see where it cuts at this time. Hold me steady around 11 miles per hour there. Ten. So pedal assist one might be a little bit fast if you have this unlocked to a class three. Because as you adjust your max speed, your pedal assist level seem to get a little bit faster or slower. To get in your settings, you hit the plus and minus button here. Go into the user settings and we'll change the speed limit from 32 to 45. Well, let's just go to 50 or 60. We'll go 60. This is probably in kilometers. Unlock it to a class three and let's see what pedal assist one is at that point. And your throttle is limited to whatever pedal assist level you're in. still in pedal assist one and this bike has a really really gradual pickup on the pedal assist which is really nice it doesn't jerk you and throw you back 12 13 and i'm not really putting any pressure on the pedals i'm just turning them 14 so it's going to cut at 14 which is a little higher 
than it was when it was set for a class two. So that might be a little bit fast, like I said, for some of you on pedal assist one, but like I said, your throttle is limited to your levels, but we're gonna do this video a little different because I'm running out of daylight. I'm gonna switch over to this chest mounted GoPro here in a minute and cruise really fast till I get to that really, really long steep hill that's in the next town over and show you guys how it comes up that. So right now I'm in pedal assist four, pedal assist five, just throttle coming up a hill here. But well, we're gonna go ahead and switch over because I need to hang on with two hands for safety. 28, 29, 30. I just hit 30 miles an hour there for a minute, guys. This bike is fast with just throttle. Now I'm in pedal assist five and I do have it set, I believe at 60. I'm not sure if 60 is kilometers or miles per hour. I'm in eighth gear on the pedals. Seems to have pretty good cadence here. But this is all pretty much uphill and still maintaining 19 miles per hour here uphill. Barely putting any effort into the pedals. I'm hoping I can make it to that long hill quick enough and back home before the sun goes down. Another beautiful day here in the winter at 70 degrees, but unfortunately I couldn't get out of work early enough. <laughs> so I'm running, I'm starting to feel like I'm running out of pedals here at 26 i'm pedaling a little faster than what i would like that would have been nice to have an 11 tooth on that back cassette but you can always upgrade the chain ring in the front to a bigger chain ring maybe like a 52 to help out with some of this uh, ghost pedaling if you're traveling at higher speeds than like 25. Legs are burning a little bit. Just do some throttle only here. 29, easily. <laughs> Holy cow, guys. This thing flies with a slight downhill. Whoa. Let me slow down here, this gravel. Man, Whew. eyes are watering. Man, this thing does fly going downhill. We'll have to hit it on a straight stretch and see what kind of speed we can get out of it. But I didn't even feel the, the uh, throttle cutting out going downhill at like 30, 31 miles an hour. But like I said, we'll have to test that again. But I have a feeling this one's gonna be quick, just like the other H6. So I'm on this dirt road here. Seems pretty smooth nothing rattling on the bike really nice but I'm gonna switch back over because I need to hang on with two hands again really nice and smooth even on this gravel road now the back suspension is a little stiff in my opinion the front suspension's really nice. The back's definitely gonna help rather than having no suspension, but I feel like at my weight at about 180 pounds currently that it could have been a little softer on the back. Now, if you're a heavier rider or riding someone on back, then that heavy suspension's gonna be a lot nicer. And I feel like this is a really good bike for a heavier rider just with the power that this bike has in the battery capacity that it has. So I feel like it'll be good for heavier riders. Thirty, holy cow, 34 miles an hour there for a second. <laughs> now that was a little bit downhill, but I did not see the throttle cutting out. And one thing I noticed when I was in the settings, even though this has a 30 amp controller, you cannot adjust the current limit at all and it is set at 28 amps, which is fine. This bike has plenty of power. I'd rather have a 30 amp controller set at 28 than a 28 amp controller set at 28, but hopefully we make it to that hill soon. Another couple minutes will be there. <laughs> so 
Let me know down below, guys, what you think so far of this bike. I know I'm doing this video a little different just because I'm trying to get it done quickly here before it gets dark. So if you have any questions that I didn't cover, maybe watch the H6 video because it's a very similar bike other than the design of it. Performance-wise, it feels pretty similar. Uh, other than that, leave a comment anyway. It really helps my channel out. All right, here we go down this long, steep hill, only to turn around and come back up it. I don't know if you guys can tell in this video how steep this actually is. Brakes are working pretty good. Probably going to be pretty hot by the time I get to the bottom of this. No issues, and I can still lock them up. You know what this is a pretty straight stretch down here let's see how fast this bike will go on throttle So 29 miles per hour. Let's turn around and go the other way. Let's see. This may be a slight incline going the other way. Let's see what we'll get to going this way. And this is with just throttle, guys. 28, 29, 30, 31. 31 miles per hour, guys. Throttle only. Now let's hit this hill. See how far we can make it with just throttle. Hit the bottom at 31. All right, guys, I'm still just throttle only. This thing's pumping out 1,550 watts according to the display. Oh, and I'm in eighth gear. Hold on, let me downshift here. I'm in the wrong gear for starting out this test. All right, a little hard to do one-handed. <laughs> wow, easily. Man, I downshifted in the first, just helping it out a little bit, and it is pulling me up this hill at no problem. Five, 1,550 watts is what I'm showing on the display. And let's try to change the display here and it's showing that it's giving me 30 amps of current so even though it's, it says it's locked at 28 it's still showing that it was putting out 30 amps there and it had to be if it's pumping out 1550 watts it's at least 30 amps of current guys this bike is quick and powerful i mean there's nothing else to say quick and powerful 30 what was it 31 or something i forget already but <laughs> man just as impressive as the original h6 tons of power tons of battery too this one is 35 amp hours awesome guys all right heading back to my house before it gets dark Here we go, back up this gravel road. And I'm in max speed right now, so this is the fastest I'm able to go right now. This is uphill though. It's only giving me 20 amps of current now for some reason. Not sure why. I felt like it should have had more, a little bit more zip right there. Yeah, it's like a thousand watts is the max it's giving me right now. Wonder if the controller got hot and it's limiting me now. Yeah, I don't know guys, maybe the controller got hot and it's limiting me now. I'm only showing 18 amps of current. Nineteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Now I'm down to 950 some. Now it's feeling like a 500 watt motor. Only thing I could think of 
is maybe the controller's warm from pumping out 30 amps of current and maybe it's limiting me now control says 89 i think that might be controller temperature not 100 percent sure let's see if that 89 changes but i'm just going to take it easy for a while here till we get up this hill until we start going back down and we're going to see if the speed increases after the controller cools down a little bit so the last bike that did this that limited me on power with the controller was the Mataku bike that I reviewed. So that limited me once I was going up a bunch of hills for a long time, it would limit it to like half power. And it feels like this may be doing the same, limiting me probably because the controller's hot. So that controller, it looks like it's a temperature reading, I believe, it says 92 now, so it is actually going up. Obviously, we just went uphill, but I'm gonna keep an eye on that and see if I get my power back before I get home. All right, so I just went up the last long hill here, and it is limiting me right now to 14 amps of current. At the bottom, it was around 20, and it started dropping as I was coming up, and control says now 94, so that's either 94 degrees or Probably 94, what's 94 degrees Celsius? Hey Siri, 94 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. And I don't know about that, 94 degrees Celsius is 201 degrees Fahrenheit. I doubt that. There's some nice deer up here, hanging out. But yeah, it's definitely limiting me. The power never came back. All right, everyone, I made it back home. I'm going to let this cool down overnight and try to test it again tomorrow and see if that's what the issue is. If the controller just got hot and is limiting me. Now, I don't know how long that's going to take to cool down, but I'm out of daylight anyway. So we'll keep an eye on that. I don't remember the regular H6 doing that, but I also don't remember putting it through that kind of load, trying to do a max speed run test both ways and then hitting that hill, a lot of throttle only going up it and then pretty much pulling 1500 watts almost all the way up that hill. That was a lot of wattage to pull. So obviously either something burn out or the controller is limiting me from being hot. If that's the case, that is a pretty good protection measure. I don't know, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right, everyone, so it is the next day, actually two days later, and it's 20 degrees cooler. It's only 49 degrees, and th this thing, I've been riding it now for a few miles, and it's back up to having 30 amps of power. Actually hit 31 amps at one point, so guaranteed it was probably a limitation on the controller from being hot. I mean, I was really pushing this thing at max speed for a while and then hitting that huge hill that I barely put any effort into. And that's why I always recommend helping pedal up hills and putting some of your own effort into it to limit that on your controller, on your battery, on your motor. And that's a good example right there because right now the bike's running great, tons of power. And currently I'm doing my normal loop that I usually do in all my tests. I was gonna do this video a little differently, but it looks like I have to do this just to compare towards other bikes. And we're gonna go up all the same hills I always go up. I'm not really gonna show that. Um, uh, well, I will show one of the hills I go up at the end there. That'll be the main one because the controller will have some good use by then. And we'll see how it performs up those hills and if it limits me power by the end of this rad today, because it shouldn't none of my other bikes will limit me on power except for that mitaku that i reviewed where it limited you once you got about halfway into your ride going up all these hills now in walkie's defense they do have a 30m controller in this bike so just keep in mind if you're in the higher pedal assist levels or if you're using full throttle a lot pushing that 30 amps of current just keep an eye on your controller uh, temperature which is shown on the display right now it's at 40 and I believe the other day in that ride that it uh, uh, got hot and limited me it was somewhere around 90 so almost double what it is now and it's been holding 39 to 40 steady throughout this whole ride so far and I'm riding it just like I normally ride most of my bikes I very rarely ever ride as hard as I did the other day I mean <laughs> Usually I just like, I like to cruise, get good power. When you hit hills, help it out, get a little bit of exercise. So 
I, I mean, I was pushing it, but I love to show you guys the limitations and didn't want to leave anything out in this video so you know what to expect. See you guys when we hit some hills. We're in 1450 watts currently, 28 amps. Only in pedal assist four, right up that hill easily. Switching through to different displays here. You can actually see current on this side, on this display. Speedometer is real nice in the center and your battery meter on the right hand side. Actually, let me switch to this here so we can see the watts and the amps. And then if I notice it, to li notice it start limiting me, then I'll switch screens and see what temperature that controller is at. It's at 40 degrees Celsius, I'm assuming, right now. Pretty sure that reads Celsius. All right, guys, this is one of the steepest hills in my town. What I'm going to do here is do this throttle only, starting here. Now I went up this with throttle only in my last test on the electric uh, Expedition cargo bike and it climbed right up it with just throttle. Never dropped below five miles per hour on this one. So it did make it up with just throttle. I would not recommend doing that. My controller uh, uh, temperature is up to 59 right now. It did walk up it with just throttle, and that's what will make your controller temperature go up, because right now it's at 63. So we'll see if it limits me on the next hill. All right, guys, here we go up this uh, last long hill before my house, and we're going to see if the power is cut. Now I'm in gear six on the free wheel, so I could be down a few more gears to help it out a little bit more. I'm going to put just a basically the effort that I usually put in my bikes coming up this hill and see how it performs. Now it's outputting 30 to 31 amps of current according to the meter on the display. Actually the upper meter says 28, the lower one says 30 to 31. So there's a little discrepancy between the two there. Pedal assist five. And about right here is where the Mataku actually cut power about halfway up this hill. Controllers at 72 degrees Celsius, 73, 74. So that is climbing. We'll see at what temperature it starts to limit me. Hasn't limited me yet. Did I say that right? Limited me yet? I think that's what I said. <laughs> so 28 now, 27. So it looks like about 70 eight degrees it starts limiting you and the max it's giving me now is 27 amps so once you start getting close to around 79 to 80 degrees celsius that's when it's going to start limiting you on power it did start limit limiting me slightly there we're still getting 28 amp uh, amps of current which most bikes have a uh, peak output of anywhere between 20 to 24 amps. Sometimes you'll get one with 25 amp controller. So it's still putting out way more than what most bikes do, even though it's limiting me there. And I didn't even feel that limitation to be honest, because it was only like two amps that it limited me. If I didn't see it on the display, I wouldn't have really felt the difference. But we'll try this next hill here really the last one it's the first one that I go up on all my tests and we will do throttle only up that one to see what we can maintain controllers at 77 it's giving me 28 amps of current And when I was riding earlier, I seen our car pulled over here, <clears throat> throwing a bunch of white siding over the hillside here. Man, I hate people like that. Why, why you got a litter like that and trash up society? 
That drives me nuts. And then they hurried up and shut the trunk and acted like they were loading firewood up or something. All right, here we go. The hill I go up on all my tests initially, and this is after 16 miles on the, on the bike since a full battery charge, showing voltage is at 49 volts, but actually it's probably higher than that. If I shut the bike off, turn it back on, that voltage will probably go up. So let's see how we can make it out with uh, just full throttle. Controllers at 78, giving me 27 amps of current and 1,280 watts, 27, still 26 amps of current, down to six miles an hour, down to five miles an hour, still giving me 26 amps of current, controller temperatures at 80, 25 amps of current, 24, 25. So still limiting me to about 24 to 25 amps of current there. So not too bad. Did slow down pretty good though, to about five miles an hour coming up that hill. So I don't know guys. I mean, honestly, it's a nice bike, tons of power, but not usable 100% of the time. You have to keep in mind when you're gonna use that power. If you ride this bike in the PAS levels and stay out of the throttle, stay out of the full throttle, hitting that 30 amps all the time, it's gonna be a very, very nice bike and still a lot nicer than most 750 watt bikes with smaller controllers because those just never give you the higher output. This will give you the higher output, but then start limiting you once things get warm, but you still get pretty good output out of it. Uh, yesterday or the day before when I had the uh, limitation, it actually limited it, that, limited it down to, it felt like probably somewhere around a 500 watt bike, something similar to like the Hay Bike Mars, maybe a little bit more power like the electric. So even though it limited me down to there, like I said, I put it through a hurt and coming up that hill and I don't know guys, let me know what you think down below in the comments. But if you like this video, please consider subscribing, giving it a thumbs up. Follow me to see more videos like this and I will see you guys around in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you're considering purchasing one of these, there'll be affiliate links down below in the description. See you around.